Welcome to the Potter Blog site. It is July 12th, 11 p.m. I want to give you guys an alert that the EPA has blacked out real-time radioactive monitoring of uh, beta. Basically, they've taken down the beta graphs across the entire country. And it just so happens this coincides with uh, some data analysis I did on July 1st showing a large amount of censoring, data censoring occurring in the EPA RADnet data for St. Louis. Now, what I had asked in that, as a result, I had hoped that EPA would release the raw data, the unmanipulated raw data, and that in turn they would also release their protocols for how they sample the data so we would know if something happened outside of the uh, standard operating procedure. But what they have done instead is just to remove the beta graphs from the entire nation. So if you want to know what your local uh, beta fallout is looking like today, you're not going to be able to find it. They have still allowed uh, queries into the database, but they throttle those to limit them to 400 records uh, per query. So they've made it very difficult to find out any information now on what's happening uh, from the uh, radioactive beta fallout. Now their explanation is is that near real-time beta monitoring results frequently do not pass quality control criteria due to quote local radio frequency interference. For this reason near real-time beta monitoring graphs are not displayed on the site. Well they've been displayed for the last several months. Just seems now that I've pointed out that uh, there's something uh, strange in the data, something unusual, that they've decided to restrict the data even further. Now, of course, it would take a Freedom of Information Act request from the EPA to know if uh, my analysis of the data censoring had any actual influence upon the EPA in their decision to further restrict the, uh, the data uh, regarding beta radiation in the country. But, you don't have to be a Benoit Mandelbrot to uh, look at this following chart and know that something's not just ain't right. And if we look at this chart, we can see here that almost this, all the data censoring, at least of this one specific type, occurs early on, early part of April. A lot of it, if you look at these little blue squares, so there's a lot of this data censoring going on. Also coincides with when I detected 62 times background radiation on April 15th. So not randomly distributed. Then after that they sort of cut back and this coincides with the uh, Fukushima explosions of the nuclear reactors and when we would probably see the maximum amounts of radiation from that time period. And we go through till June 11th where I detected 50 times background radiation and once again just so happens that specific type of uh, data censoring turned up again and you can see this chart in further detail but the key here is, is that uh, radio interference as they call it uh, not be expected to be distributed in such a pattern so we have to think for a second well how could what does their term radio interference mean? Well, there's a reason radioactivity is called radioactive. So in light of what I've seen that they appear to be doing, I can only conclude that radio frequency interference is a pseudo-ethical, legalistic, technical jargon for radioactive materials the EPA doesn't want to report. They've got a name for that too. They call it reviewed and approved data. I guess that's a lot like this non-war we're not fighting in Libya. You know, at least we can be thankful the EPA is not in charge of uh, issuing tornado warnings and they're not censoring <laughs> radar data. Otherwise the people in Joplin might never have gotten any tornado warning. And I, what a lot of people I think don't realize is that up until 1950 it used to be illegal to get tornado warnings. Because somebody in the government figured out more lives would be saved by not panicking the people with tornado warnings. You know, maybe someday in the future after the thyroids have been burned out and the last kid has died of Fukushima leukemia, we won't have to rely on government reviewed and approved data to safeguard our families. It's just a sad state of affairs. You know, the EPA should have done is release the unmanipulated raw data. 
but instead they made it very difficult to know what's happening to us. Good night.